Joining me now, Derek Morgan of the Heritage Foundation, Vice President of the Institute for Economic Freedom and Opportunity. Derek, we thank you for joining us today from Washington, D.C. Thank you for having me. So, Derek, do you agree with Senator Sessions? I absolutely do. The fact that the president is contemplating now a new executive order granting amnesty for five million or perhaps even more illegal immigrants is, uh, is extremely troubling. It was bad enough when he did it with the so-called dreamers, uh, but now he's gonna do it with millions more. Derek, when you take a look at this, what is the president hoping to gain by uh, granting these rights, giving this amnesty to illegal immigrants? Well, uh, his stated purpose is, uh, in his view, to, quote, grant relief, unquote, uh, to those who are here illegally from deportation. I, essentially, that means that he's decided there's a law that Congress has passed that's on the books that previous president has signed that he's decided he doesn't like, so he doesn't want to uh, enforce that law. A more cynical view might be that uh, this would help him in the election in November uh, among those who are more sympathetic to illegal immigrants. Uh, you mentioned electioneering, Derek. Uh, Donald Trump offered his perspective on why the president may be doing this. Let's listen to the Donald, and I'd like you to react to his comment after we listen to it. Here it is. I mean, it's, it, nobody can be that incompetent to allow what's happening to happen. So it must be a concerted effort. There's no other way that you can think of it. And they come into the system, and over a period of many years, they become Democrats, and they vote for the Democrats. But this is a concerted effort because nobody can be as incompetent as it's showing. So uh, the Donald says it's not incompetence. It's a, uh, it's a well-designed plan. Your take on that? Well, uh, if, if he is right that it was a well plan or it was a plan, I think it's actually backfired tremendously. Uh, while some might have thought that uh, the storyline that there were a lot of unaccompanied children coming across the border, uh, that that would draw a lot of sympathy, it's actually had the opposite effect. People see now that when you promise amnesty and even give amnesty, it encourages more and more illegal immigrants to come. And so now you're seeing there was a poll out just recently that showed that the vast majority of the American people want to see these, um, all of these illegal immigrants, most of whom are adults, deported immediately. And speaking of that polling, I'll be talking about that a little bit later in my commentary here, but now I'm really more interested in, in your perspective, uh, especially as we take a look at what, uh, and, and you've got to get a kick out of the, the language involved. Uh, the LA Times puts it this way. White House officials are looking at a large scale expansion of immigration rights that could come down in the next few weeks uh, through uh, executive action. First of all, expansion of uh, immigration rights, that's just a fancy way to say amnesty. But if this does indeed happen, what will be the result? What will be the impact? Well, the impact will be uh, more illegal immigrants will come. They will see that uh, illegal activity is instead of uh, being prosecuted, uh, it's actually welcome in that you can jump to the front of the line. You know, part of the part of this that is most troubling to me is all of those legal immigrants, and America admits one million legal immigrants every year, that uh, the people who are waiting in line, following the rules, uh, they're being uh, really discriminated against by those who have decided they're going to take the law into their own hands and break the law. To me, that's one of the more troubling aspects of all of this. Derek, you have made a great point. What about those people who play by the rules, who observe the rule of law and have tried to come to this country lawfully? Well, we obviously have seen in the past when we failed to deal with illegal immigration, it brings more illegal immigrants to the here and now of the, quote, children being let into the country. We're hearing from different school districts around the country, they expect, just for lack of a better term, to be overrun. What is this going to mean financially to so many school districts around the country? It's going to mean a lot of costs, J.D. In fact, um, one of the nation's best welfare experts is here at Heritage, Robert Rector. He looked at the costs of granting amnesty to currently uh, present illegal immigrants. He added up all of the costs, so the cost to school districts and so forth, and added up all the benefits because Illegal immigrants actually, believe it or not, do pay a number of taxes. But he added all of that up and he found out that over their lifetime, we'd be looking at more than $5 trillion of costs on the American taxpayer at the federal, state, and local level. Derek, uh, as we sit here and try to absorb those astronomical costs and the trillions of dollars, th there's another curious story that's emerging 
uh, in the education file reports that illegal adults are posing as uh, teenagers to enroll in public high schools. What have you been hearing about that? You know, I, I would not be surprised. The fact is that the, the current, the president's current proposal, the Deferred Action on Childhood Arrivals, actually incentivizes a lot of fraud. Uh, you know, the fact that people can come in, they can say, I came here before I was uh, 16, and uh, I came here through no fault of my own, and I qualify for this amnesty. So it's not surprising to me that there would be fraud. In fact, if you look back at the 1986 amnesty, a lot of the best scholarly work on that has indicated that perhaps upward of one quarter of all of the applicants for amnesty then were fraudulent. So we are taking a look at fraud. We only have, have about a minute left, but Heritage seems to stand alone uh, amidst the Washington establishment saying to Capitol Hill and the president, don't do this. Uh, what are you hearing from congressional offices? Are the phone lines, in fact, melting down from people calling? Absolutely, they are. And I think that's been happening, uh, you know, this, this whole week, and I uh, expect it'll probably continue. You know, I was on C-SPAN the other day, and every caller was upset that our laws are not being enforced. You know, we're a generous people. We don't want to certainly uh, see anyone coming across the border, particularly children. Uh, we don't want to see them mistreated and so forth. But the fact is we have immigration laws, and we all need to follow them. It's the only fair way to, to be. And I would offer as a footnote, Derek, when C-SPAN has callers, they have party lines for Republicans, Democrats, and independents. This is a widespread concern. Derek Morgan, Vice President uh, for the Institute for Economic Freedom, Freedom and Opportunity at the Heritage Foundation, we thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you for having me on. So we heard from Derek, what's your take on what should happen? We'd love to have your comments. Why don't you tweet them to me at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum.